In this next section, I'd like to talk about the followers' objectives. Two of the most important things I think followers need to think about are supporting their own body weight, staying in what we already talked about as a three-point body position, shoulders, hips, and feet in a vertical line, and center directly over the supporting foot, whether it's both feet, left or right foot. It should be directly over that foot. The knees can be bent, you can be moving from side to side, but still your center is well supported over your own feet, so you're not really asking the leader to hold you up. There are some occasions where we do use resistance, opposing resistance, where we're setting back, and that's okay if your partner is aware and ready that that you, you or he is going to do that. But for the most part, if you think about supporting your own center, you're going to be a whole lot safer and mo much more in control than any other time. The other thing is be connected. Be connected to the leader. A couple different ways. One is physically, with your hand connected to his hand, and so he can feel you, so he can feel where your center is. The other thing is a visual connection, where you're looking at him. You can see what he's doing. He can see what you're doing. And at this point, I'm going to ask Robert to come on out here and help me with showing you a couple of these points. So as I connect my right hand to his left hand, whether I'm down into my knees or whether I'm up here, this hand stays connected with to him and it doesn't move as I move, as long as I'm doing a syncopated or individual action. If I'm doing a basic where I'm following him, I want to make sure that this hand is connected to my center so that he can feel me and I can feel exactly what he wants me to do. The other thing that we just talked about is a visual connection. I want to be focused on him. I can look out. I don't have to stare at my partner the whole time. I can look out, but I want to check back in to see what he's about to do. So usually like at the beginning and end of a pattern, you want to try and be focused on your partner so you can see what that person is doing. The first pattern or, or yeah, pattern that I want to go through and talk about a lot of followers technique and pointers is the underarm turn. So we're going to demonstrate that underarm turn. One two, three, and four, five, and six. The first two steps for the lady are two forward walking steps where she's just going to walk directly down the center of the slot while the guy moves out to the side. So she has walk, walk. Then she's going to do a turn. In this turn, I like to use a French cross. And that I'm going to demonstrate from this side so you get a chance to see it in relationship to my partner. So we have one, two, and then we have a French cross, three and four. And then we finish it off five and six. So demonstrating that technique, in the feet, the lady's footwork is going to walk forward on one, forward on two. And then we do this French cross technique, which is side, cross in front, step to the side, and complete the rotation. So you've made your half a turn at this point, and then your triple step in place, five and six, in which case I'm using an anchor step. So again, ladies, I'm going to do it from this side, and then you can see exactly what the back is doing. One, two, and then ball of the foot only, not whole foot, just ball of the foot, then taking the left foot and bringing it across, ball flat, and then ball flat with the right foot, finishing on the count of four. Then we're just going to do our ending triple, which is an anchor, five and six. The French cross technique allows a whole lot of flexibility that some of the other variations don't necessarily provide you with. There are a couple different ways that the leader can lead the underarm turn and the two major ways are what I consider a more contemporary way in which case the lady moves through the center of the slot and out the other side where the man is pretty much holding his position. And I'm going to use Robert again to demonstrate that. So he's going to do the more contemporary version where the man pretty much stays in the center of the slot and the lady moves through the center of the slot way out to the other side. So she's got 
one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So she has a very long slot. Ladies, you need to recognize this as you're dancing with the leader so you know how to adjust that center triple step. Now, if my leader does a very, uh, a, a more traditional type of underarm turn that was done pretty much before this new contemporary version was invented, he moves. He moves his position and we end up exchanging positions which makes for a very short slot. A short slot means my triple step on counts three and four are going to turn almost in place, in which case it looks like this. One, two, three and four, five and six. So you see that we pretty much exchanged positions and we're going to do that again so that you can see that. One, two, three and four, five and six. 